guests. It is the great Keith Smith, NBA reporter, all over the map, Yahoo Sports, Real GM, Celtics blog, front office show. Follow Keith on Twitter at KeithSmithNBA. Keith, good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Thanks for giving us a few minutes here. It's a, I know I had a ton of questions just about what we watched last night, and I thought that was going to take up most of our time. But like I said, with the breaking news just happening and coming down the pike minutes ago, Steve Nash, head coach now of the Brooklyn Nets, he will coach KD, he will coach Kyrie. I guess does this mean in your, in your mind with the Steve Nash hiring that Greg Povich either didn't want to go to Brooklyn or they weren't able to work out some sort of compensation for it? Does that make the most sense? Yeah, my guess is he that wasn't something Greg Popovich was interested in. It, it's hard to get anything out of the Spurs organization when you reach out to them. They're they're pretty locked down. But from my understanding was he, he doesn't want to coach anywhere but San Antonio. He's been such a you know big part of what they've built there over really about a almost now a thirty year period that I can't see him being anywhere else. Obviously we don't know what Steve Nash coaching acumen per se is, right? We know how great he was as a player on the court. I guess I'm just curious, what do you think, is, is there a certain angle, I guess, that the the, uh, the Brooklyn Nets kind of prioritized in hiring a head coach with this hire, do you think? Or is it still too early to kind of tell what the direction that they wanted from their head coach to be? Yeah, I, I think it's probably a little too early, but I think mostly what they're looking for Steve Nash to do is come in and he's going to have to learn on the fly, but he's worked under good good, good coaches. They've both been in his time uh, as player development and assisting front offices, as well as when he was a player. So he'll be able to lean on that. But I think the other thing is it's, it's you're really relying on Steve Nash as much as anything to come in and manage personalities. And he's been able to do that throughout his entire basketball career in, in Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant. He's got two of the game's biggest personalities to manage, but that team also has players like Karis LeVert, who really blossomed into, you know, a great player himself throughout the course of this restart. Spencer Dinwiddie, who's a guy who's been used to having the ball quite a bit. And then you've got Jared Allen, DeAndre Jordan, who are kind of going head-to-head for the center spot. There's a lot of stuff that needs to be managed through with that roster as it's built right now. I think they're looking for Steve Nash to kind of be that guy. I mean, we were just joking before. Hope Steve Nash has people, because like you just said, there's, there could be potential for a lot of drama. There's a lot of position battles battling out. There's a lot of guys that deserve the ball and could use the ball. But as we know, there's only one basketball when that game is played. It'll be very interesting for, uh, for Steve Nash to navigate in his first year as a head coach. Talking with the great Keith Smith at Keith Smith NBA. So, Keith, I'll just ask you this because, I mean, <laughs> yesterday we saw maybe two of the wackiest endings combined. We saw the, the referees really get involved with both the Heat, the Bucks, and the Rockets' Thunder. Just what are your overall thoughts? Because this is, again, two endings that we really kind of see in the playoffs, especially with the walk-off free throw in the game. Just what was your overall takeaways from both from last night's both games? Yeah, I mean, that's why we all tune in, right, is to see the referees make big calls exactly. in charming games. I mean, it's, it's Scott know, Foster it, time, right, in crunch time. It's forget for, forget all, it. you know, James Harden. It's Scott Foster time. That's it. Yeah, I said uh, Scott Foster saw Mark Davis at the end of the first game and said, here, <laughs> hold my beer. I <laughs> you know, it, it, it's a little disappointing because you always want to see it, you know, determined by the players. In, you know how things happen in, in that uh, retrospect there, but you know I, I don't know that they had too huge of an impact really at the end of the Houston OKC game. There, there was definitely some, but but I don't think it changed the outcome. Miami should have won uh, against the Bucs, and they ultimately did win, so it didn't really change the outcome. It's just more more the process to get to those results. Is it isn't the way you really want to see it go down? You'd rather see it, you know, a uh, shot in the air and the players are making plays. Ended, but yeah, absolutely crazy. The last five playoff games have all been decided by four or less points. So, you know, if you're not watching, you're missing some really fun, exciting finishes. Absolutely. And if you complain, you know, you, you know the outcome in, in NBA because, right, that's the NBA, especially the playoffs, are the one sport that the other major three. There's not too much parity for the most part. The higher seeds always advance. There's few upsets, but the bubble has been the great equalizer so far. Like you said, it's just every game so far down the stretch has been exciting. And now you look up. Well, we'll get to the Eastern Conference here in a second, but you have the Bucks down 0-2. You have the Raptors down 0-2. Uh, I do want to just kind of circle back quickly last night to the, the Rockets-Thunder game. Because my overall, th- one of my overall thoughts was that, okay, the Rockets won. But yet again, I mean, James Harden did win with his defense. It's 2020, right, Keith? I mean, only fitting that James Harden defensively helps win the game in a big spot. But I'm curious, are you concerned? Because yet again, James Harden struggles on the field. I think he was, what, 4 of 17 or 4 of 11, I believe, from – I know he hit 1-3, one, 1 of 9 from 3. Another big moment where he kind of shrinks. Can the Rockets win a championship if he continues to play like this in the big moments? 
No, absolutely not. They won't even win the next series if he plays like that. They they need him to be great. They need him to be, you know, the 35, 40 points per night, James Harden, with, you know, brutal efficiency and, you know, hitting step back and getting to the free throw line and all those things that he does. I, I feel like he was better early in this series against the Thunder before Russell Westbrook returned. And then when Westbrook got there, it felt like they were doing a little too much your turn, my turn, and it got, got a little messy. And that's something that they, they can work through. Unfortunately for them, they don't have a lot of time to work through it. They've got today, um, which will probably mostly be a rest day. They'll probably do some kind of walkthrough to install some things for the Lakers. And then they got to play again tomorrow. That's you know the nature of the way this is going down. They're playing every other day. So there's very little time off for these guys and very little time to kind of get back in rhythm and figure these things out. But, you know, the Rockets, they, they just got to go back to being the team they were uh, pre-Westbrook getting hurt because they really found the right balance where it was Westbrook was playing that secondary role. And I feel like after his return, he took on far more of a primary role, especially late in games with Harden, you know, really relegated to kind of being a spot-up shooter. And that's not the kind of offense you want to be running if you're Houston. Right, in game six, we saw it down the stretch. Russell Wilson's the one bringing it. I mean, Russell Wilson. Russell Westbrook had the NFL on the mind here. Russell Westbrook is the one bringing up the court, making the passes. Like you said, James Harden is either back trying to get the ball or just kind of standing there waiting for someone else to make a play to give him the ball. It's been interesting to watch. So, so with that, I mean, whether it's Russell Westbrook as his teammate, Chris Paul, we've seen James Harden continually shrink. Is there... Is it just lack of confidence? Like, what is it? Is there something you could point to watching James Harden, the way he plays in the regular season, right? He scores 50 points. He scores 60 points. He's a determined scorer. He's confident. He's still going to shoot. But once he gets to the playoffs, especially once he gets to a winner-take-all game, he just shrinks and he just almost looks like he's uninspired, doesn't want to be there. Is there something you can kind of point to in watching James Harden and the difference between a regular season game and, and like I said, a big playoff game where you need your stars to, to show up? He consistently doesn't show up. I think in previous years, it said he's worn out. He's tired. The player in the league carries a heavier load than James Harden does. That team plays, you know, very few players. They, they play seven, eight guys. And now that they're back to playing small ball, he's guarding, you know, guys who are much bigger than him on almost every possession. And I think what you see with James Harden is he wears down. And then, then he, he just doesn't have it left. His legs look tired. So he doesn't have that explosiveness to get to the basket. He doesn't have the lift on his jumper. And that's where the offense just kind of leaves him. You even saw it a little bit uh, in last night's game. He made a couple plays where he drove. He made correct passes. But those are plays where he might have, you know, forced the issue a little bit more if this was earlier in the year. But I think he just gets tired and gets worn down. And the hope was with the big break, you know, over, over the hiatus that went on, that he would have been able to kind of regain his legs and, and be feeling good coming in. And I think he was when the bubble initially started. But I think we're right back to with them playing every other day. Now I think we're right back to him, you know, just being a little worn out. And that's tough to take. So it, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, what, what his activity and energy level is. That's something you have to measure. And, and usually you can tell pretty early on in, in games where, where his uh, head is at. If he's driving the ball a lot, and he's creating contact and getting to the free throw line, you feel pretty good. If he's, you know, a little more passive and hanging around the perimeter, you start to worry a little bit if you're a Rockets fan. I love that point, Keith, because going to the playoffs, talking about this series two weeks ago, I pointed that exact fact why I like the Rockets. I thought they can actually make a run because, like you said, year in and year out, he's always at the top of the minutes playlist. And especially when you shoot that many threes that they do, you see in the playoffs, they're short, he's missing it. And I honestly thought this layoff helped the Rockets maybe the most of any team. You get a rejuvenated James Harden. It's almost like you're starting a new season, but now these games actually matter. And it's, it's I mean, I don't, I don't know if right. Maybe it's the every other day grind, even though you're not traveling. It's still you're not used to playing every other day consistently for basically a month. But you're right. He does almost look worn out despite the fact he shouldn't because he's had four months off. Yeah, and, and, that's, and that's the tough part. And I was with you. I thought the Rockets had a chance to be really, really dangerous in this restart. And I don't want to completely move off that. I think Oklahoma city was a unique matchup for them because Oklahoma city, other than Steven Adams was very content to play small as well. And they, they, they could do so very well. So they're, they're going to create a unique challenge for the Lakers who play one of the bigger lineups in the entire league. So it's going to be really interesting to see how those teams go head to head. It's going to be curious to see who gets the call on James Harden. My guess is it'll be Danny green to start, but Alex Caruso wouldn't be surprised if you see, uh, Dion Waiters 
uh, reemerge a little bit in this series just as a guy who's he's strong. He can at least take the hits from Harden and keep him in front a little bit. So that's going to be curious to see how they defend that. I'm not going to count the Rockets out because you know Harden and Westbrook to a slightly lesser extent can almost win a game by themselves and then each – and then with the way they shoot three pointers, they can you know win a game just by you know burying an avalanche of threes where they win win a game or two, and then all of a sudden now you're in a game seven, and we know anything can happen there. So I'm not going to count them out, but hey, they they need Harden to get back to being the efficient you know machine that he usually is. Yes, I without a doubt, Keith. I'm hoping you're right.